Hello friends, welcome to a Jillian Eve bonus video. One of the projects that I've shown on my channel in some of my live streams is a project that I'm doing on my triangle loom and people were very curious about this. So I would like to include this bonus video in this week's lineup so that I can show you how I weave using a triangle loom with my hand spun. If this is your first time visiting this channel, welcome. I'm Evie and I make yarn. Let's get into today's topic, triangle loom weaving. A triangle loom is a frame loom. That means that the weaving is done um, and held by the edges of a frame. This triangle loom has a 90 degree angle on one corner and two 45 degree angles on the other corners. This is a simple loom to make at home if you have some scrap wood and some leftover or extra nails hanging around, you can put one of these together pretty easily. The other two corners are 45 degree angles and this particular loom has a 21 and a half or so inch leg on each side and the hypotenuse is just under 30 inches. If you count across each side, there are 60 nails from one corner counted with each side and then the next corner counted with the other side. Each side of the triangle has the same number of pins or nails or pegs. This has 60 nails on each side. I do also have a larger triangle loom. It is put away in storage right now because it is very large and I just don't have room for it. But I'd like to show you a couple of shawls that I made on my larger loom with my own hand spun yarn. So here they are. This is my very most favorite shawl. I love purple and I love the hand spun yarn that was used in this shawl. All of it is hand spun except for the yarn that you see on the fringe. This yarn was plied with some glass seed beads and it pops out in the weaving in just a very subtle and sparkly way and I love this shawl. I would say this is probably my go-to shawl. I love it. This is another of the larger shawls that I did on the big loom. And as you can see, these shawls, when the colors change, have a plaid pattern in them. It is absolutely effortless to weave a plaid pattern with the continuous strand method on a triangle loom. And that makes it so much fun. On, on this shawl, the tan yarn that you see there is a blend of some alpaca and silk that I spun and the bright chartreuse yellow green is a cotton yarn. I did not spin this one. Uh, this was left over in my stash and so I used it up in a shawl. But I think it looks pretty good. Here is one more purple shawl, my favorite purple. You can see in this shawl that there is some very bulky and textured yarn in there. And that type of yarn just works so well in these projects and on these looms. So if you have a lot of textured yarn and you're not sure how to use it, I highly recommend trying out some woven pieces. And triangle loom weaving is a great way to start. I'm going to show you how I weave on a triangle loom using my smaller loom. The smaller loom makes a piece about this size. The pale pink two ply is one that I hand spun. The other color in there I don't think was my hand spun. I'm actually not sure where it came from. It was left over from a project also. I like this little chalette. I think it's very cute. It looks great as a layer with a little jacket thrown over, as a scarf, or as a little chalette. So even though this loom is smaller and it doesn't produce the full-sized shawl, it absolutely can make a usable project. All right, let's get weaving. I'm going to be using this hand spun in this project. I have some balled up here. 
I used about half of a skein so far, making one triangle. So let's make another triangle. To start, we're going to put a slip knot around the top left outside corner peg. We want it to be a slip knot because when we're finished weaving, we're going to undo this knot to remove the piece from the loom. Then we take the yarn across. We will come under the opposite corner peg, up and around, and make a figure eight kind of motion. Then we take the yarn back across the loom to the left-hand side, where we will come around the next empty peg, up to the top to wrap over this is the point when we start the weaving. So we're going to go over and under. I find it easier to pull it through with my fingers at the very beginning. Now we can arrange the next row. You'll bring it around the outer peg and back towards the center. We'll carry it across to the right hand side. We'll bring the yarn between the next two empty pegs up to the top empty peg. This is the point when we will go over and under through the center warps. Then we bring that yarn down around the next empty peg and back across. And now we repeat over, under, over, under. Bring that yarn through, arrange it on the side that you were just working from. So bring it down, around the next empty peg, and across. Bring it over the next empty peg, and then up to the top. With this view, you should have a clearer picture of how the yarn is moving back and forth to build inward from the sides. I've created a little bit of a time lapse so that you can see how the full triangle is constructed in the loom. There it is. We have one last thing to do before we can remove it from the loom. When you pull the last thread through to finish the weaving, you'll notice that it's doubled up down the center. It doesn't split from one side to the other because it's the odd one in the middle. Snip it off the top. Then we'll pull that last strand through from the bottom. It is very satisfying at the end of the project to see that last little piece coming through. Bring it down and that's it, you're finished. That end piece is the tail that you will weave in. At this point, you can check to be sure everything is lined up how you'd like it to be. When you've finished this weaving, you can take it straight off the loom. But if you'd like, before you take it off the loom while it's under tension, it's much easier to add fringe or a crocheted border. Depending on the elasticity of your yarn, and the tension while you wove, you will have some shrink up and draw in from your finished piece. It will not 
actually be as large as the loom is itself. The springier your yarn, the tighter your weave, the smaller your piece will be in the end. So make sure to take that into account if you are planning out your loom size. Sometimes to give the top edge of the work a little bit of a nicer finish, I do like to crochet over the top. It just makes it look a little less raw, but since I'm stitching this together with some other pieces, I don't need to do that. Remember the slip knot we started with? Now is the time to gently untie that from your first peg and you can take that knot out. You don't need it anymore to anchor your yarn. It will hold together just fine. Another great thing you can do with a triangle loom is put multiple triangles together. You can stitch them up across the top and create a poncho or stitch all the way across and create a blanket. There are many shapes and different designs that you can achieve if you put the triangles together in different patterns. Thank you so much for joining me in this bonus video. If you have any questions about the techniques that you saw in this video or about the triangle loom equipment, please leave a comment and let me know. And give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this bonus video. I'll see you on Tuesday for another spinning tutorial and Friday for a live stream. Happy weaving!